And what's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, it is your boy Cheap Ludes back with another video. I wasn't going to make any videos today just because not much was happening, but I decided to jump back on here and talk about the cryptic ass tweet that 2K dropped. And uh, some new content that we got dropped today actually that kind of flew under the radar a little bit. So before we get started, drop a like on this video man, comment down below, subscribe if you're new. I do this every day, it'd be super sweet if you could subscribe to the channel, but... So if you guys are not aware, do not follow NBA 2K21 My Team Twitter. Um, they dropped kind of a weird tweet today that said, Tomorrow, one iconic pair of teammates will lay the foundation for My Team's Pantheon. Which A, number one, they did not use the word Pantheon in the correct way, in any way, shape, or form. Just in relation to 2K, it makes zero fucking sense whatsoever. But it's kind of led to a lot of speculation, which I'll talk to in a little bit. But if you guys haven't done it today, I highly recommend, even if you're not going for Baron Davis, to go grab this Karis LeVert card by doing this challenge. Just remember, stamina means absolutely nothing in 2K, so when you see the Gatorade symbol, it doesn't mean anything, because you do have to use seven Nets players. Couple this with the NBA's back challenges, get this done. Get this Karis LeVert, man. Even for lower overall challenges and like limited, this card is going to be very helpful. He's an incredibly good card. Um, but yeah, just use your starting five. You don't even have to use your bench, dude. It doesn't matter. But if you guys are not aware, we are close to getting that Baron Davis, which if you finish all the NBA's back challenges, there's also that Drew Holiday. But like I said, bro, this Karis LeVert card, super good. Um, I mean, he's not like God tier. He's probably not going to make it into most of your starting lineups, but... He's an incredibly effective Ruby card that costs absolutely nothing. All you got to do is play one game to get him. So highly recommend going and doing that. He's actually really good. I've been playing around with him on Triple Threat for a little while. He's fun. I like Karis LeVert in game. Some people don't. He's got solid badge count. 26 gold. He even has like gold flexible and stuff like that, which is incredibly paramount in current gen. Definitely more so than next gen, but... Yeah, he's just a really good card. I highly recommend everybody grab him. Like, there's no, there's no reason that you could give me that would justify not going to pick this card up like he's a great lower overall card he's free you need him for baron davis there's just ample reasons to go pick him up but and if you haven't done that yet i recommend go and do the nba's back challenges um a you're going to get like three four thousand mt or not mt xp and you're going to get this drew holiday card which like staying with the tradition this year of 2k just making all the best point guards like amethyst for no reason Another incredibly good Amethyst point guard, and he's free. This guy's going to be a staple of budget lineups, man. He plays, like, some of the most effective defense, period, uh, for any point guard in this entire game. Like, Chris Paul's pretty good defensively, but Drew Holiday blows him out of the water. He has some good badges. Granted, most of his badges lean towards more of a shooting guard. But he's got every defensive badge gold. He's got 44 badges total. Um... Quick first step, quick tight handles, unpluckable. Like, he's got some shooting badges with Hot Zone Hunter. He's got some facilitating with Dimer and Floor General. I recommend giving him, like, Dead Eye, Flexible is a must, and Range Extender. But other than that, man, he's an incredibly good card. Um, he's got good stats. I think his. Let me check his tendencies. His tendencies are solid. They're not, like, game breaking, but they're very, very good. He's going to go out there, jump, r jump lanes. He's going to steal the ball off people. He's really, really good. But we are about to talk about what's coming tomorrow here in a second. He also has a 55 play discipline. But if you guys are not aware, like tomorrow, it's teased that Idols ends tomorrow, right? I don't know how true that is. I feel like it might be, but I'm also just not sure with 2K. That's kind of the major speculation going on right now. But nobody knows for sure. For all we know, we could just be getting a really good promo set tomorrow. Like, I'm guessing it's going to be Idols because people grabbed Dwayne Wade finally. Um, a lot of people did, so I'm guessing Idols is going to come tomorrow and they're going to finish that set off because from what I understand, the Idols Opal should be the second Opal. Who is it going to be? I don't know. It's going to be part of a duo, so I'm guessing the Pink Diamond Final Idols card will be one of the cards and the Opal will be the other one and there'll be some sort of famous duo. Now, I know a lot of people are saying Kobe Shaq, though from what, I, from what everyone's saying, it's going to be a power forward. Is going to be the actual Idols reward, so I don't really... I, I don't know, man. Kobe and Shaq makes the most sense. And then I see people saying Larry Bird and McHale. And if that's the case, I'll be so upset. Like, I will be so upset if it's Larry Bird. 
But as you can see, the price for all these guys are starting to climb. Uh, Kevin Durant has been around three, is now up to like four. Uh, Dominique's still going to be sitting at around 150. Grant Hill hasn't really peaked too hard. He'll start to peak closer to tomorrow. Tomorrow, all these guys are going to shoot up in value. Manu Ginobili is already starting to go up in value, which is awesome because I have a bunch of them, and I'm kind of excited about it. So he's already at the lowest is 86k. So if you did invest in Manu when he was down at fifth or like 50, 60k, you're already going to be making an investment, um, like a return on your investment, I should say. So I'm going to throw one up for 12 hours, 100k, see what happens. Who cares? Maybe he goes above 100k tomorrow, but he probably won't go too much above 100k. So it's really not that big of a deal. But realistically. The market is going to crash tomorrow. That's almost inevitable. Like, once this card is revealed, if it really is Kobe and Shaq, the market's going to be destroyed. Everyone's just going to be selling off all of their stuff to try to get these two cards. Um, I think if it's Bird and McHale, it won't crash the market quite as hard, but you can already kind of see the effects of what it could potentially be. When you look at a lot of these cards, like Tim Duncan's down a lot. Well, I guess he's not terribly down. I mean, he was going for around 100K earlier this week. Now he's going for about 90 that's kind of what you can expect from the crashes. It's like a 10 to 20k difference. Um, unless it can't, like starts talking about like big cards like Paul George or something like that. You're going to see it. That was going for around 400k. Now it's down to about 250 to 280. Um, Penny Hardaway wouldn't surprise me at all. If you can get him at a buy it now pretty soon. There's a lot of them up. And I don't think a lot of people will be bidding on him. So you could probably catch Penny on a buy it now. If not now when the super packs come out. Andre Karolinko is taking a hit like not a lot of people the key is not a lot of people are going to be spending MT ahead of tomorrow uh, just because everyone's going to be going for this lock-in so you're going to see a lot of these guys that have been going for a lot all season especially the guys who have bids on them no one's going to go bid on these cards like at all <laughs> unless they have something to do with idols like any of these guys no one's going to go buy these tonight so you want to wait a few hours and then go check the market. That's when you're really going to see a difference because, like, the buy it now guys, people will put them back up for less MT. Uh, when it comes to the bid guys, you'll start to see the ones being put up have less and less bids on them. That's the time to strike. Like, Giannis looks to be immune to this. Usually, like, when it comes to market crashes like Giannis, Tracy McGrady, LeBron, those guys are usually typically immune to the market crash. doesn't matter, like, what level of card they are or what – that's typically what happens, man. That's kind of been that way for a while. Kevin Durant's like that sometimes as well. It just kind of depends on the card. But a lot of these guys are going to have the highest value they're going to have right now um, for the rest of the year, to be honest with you, uh, just because we're getting those super packs in a couple weeks too. So that market crash tomorrow is going to kill the value for a lot of cards. So it's probably not a terrible idea to get rid of them as soon as you can. Um, you can hold on for maybe a few more days, and you could probably see their value pick up a little bit here in a couple of days, but like Rudy, I'm going to go ahead and sell him because I'm going to pick him back up when the super packs come out because he's going to be like 20k. <laughs> so I might as well make like 25k while I can. Brandon Roy is not going to be in super packs, but at the same time, I haven't used him since his card came out. Well, since Tracy McGrady came out. So it's not a terrible idea to get rid of him. If I can, I can get like 65k for mine because he's kind of got a few more gold badges or whatever. So might as well do that. I mean, I can just net myself 100k right now, get myself ready for these cards that come out tomorrow if I don't end up packing them, which I probably won't because 2k hates me. Yeah, no, I'm not, zero, not selling either of these guys. Monte Ellis stays on my team for life, dude. Um, when it comes to badges, I would wait a few days before trying to sell your gold badges. Prices are still down. Oh, gee, I wonder if gold range extenders being price fixed. They're all 19.9. <laughs> That's great. But I'd wait a few more days because I think these prices are going to be even higher in a few days. Uh, especially tomorrow, you'll start to see certain badges go up in price because whatever hot ticket cards, you know, you're going to have to apply these badges to them. So you can see a lot of those go up. We're almost at the point in the year when gold badges are going to start to decrease in price by a significant margin because cards coming out are going to have almost all of the badges gold already. Uh, Intimidator... Yeah, sell that. But, like, when it comes to bronze and silver badges, like I'm showing on the screen, like, the market is high for them right now. There's not very many of them up there. If you are in need of quick MT, I've talked about it many times, but 
gold and or not gold bronze and silver badges are going to be your your meal ticket right now especially if you're trying to stack mt for you know the cards tomorrow people are going to go and they're going to try to like prospectively buy these badges and invest in them you know prior to the cards coming out tomorrow um to try to get ahead of people and then get a little bit of mt off of it but that's really difficult to do at this stage in the game when we are starting to see like opals and high tier pink diamonds come out it's really hard to guess what badges they're not going to have unless you know the card itself like obviously you know shaq's not going to have dribbling badges and people are going to try to put them on it so if it ends up being shaquille o'neal you could probably sell those dribbling badges high but either way man it's going to be tomorrow's going to be a nightmare I don't know what's coming out. Nobody really knows anything. For all we know, it's not even idols. I'm guessing it is, but wouldn't surprise me at all if they dropped another spotlight challenge tomorrow. We still got two of those left um, for the final lock-in. I'm really excited for that card because the lock-in cards for the spotlight set have both been really good this year. Uh, they haven't been like cards that would sell out in packs, but they've been very usable cards. Like Ray for Alston's my guy. And they lock towards Baron Davis, who's probably going to be the last Opal that's available out of all the ones from this season, because 2K hates people who don't spend money. So, either way, man, it's been your boy Cheap Lose. Good luck pulling packs tomorrow. <laughs> I pray for all of you and myself. But I will be up tomorrow morning. Um, I'm probably going to stream live on YouTube for the actual pack opening. We'll see if how that works out, and then I'm going to do a couple videos as well. Hopefully I get that. I'll drop some gameplay videos and let you know if it's worth the lock-in, so check the description for all my stuff and I appreciate every one of you guys.